Hello everyone, welcome again. Today's lesson is about rickets of prematurity. Rickets in very low birds weight infants has become a significant problem as the survival rate for this group of infants has increased. The transfer of calcium and the phosphorus from mother to fetus occurs throughout pregnancy, but 80% occurs during the third trimester. Premature birds interrupt this process with rickets developing when the premature infant does not have an adequate supply of calcium and the phosphorus to support mineralization of the growing skeleton. Most cases of rickets of prematurity occur in infants with birth weight less than 1000 grams, but it's more likely to develop in infants with low birth weight and the younger gestational age. Rickets occur because unsupplemented breast milk and the standard infant formula do not contain enough calcium and the phosphorus to supply the need of the premature infant. Other risk factors include cholestatic jaundice, a complicated neonatal cold, prolonged use of parenteral nutrition, and the use of soy formula and the medications such as diuretics and the corticosteroids. When we see the clinical manifestation of rickets of prematurity, rickets of prematurity occurs one to four months after birth. Infants can have non-traumatic fractures, especially of the legs, arms, and the ribs. Most fractures are not suspected clinically because fractures and the softening of the ribs leads to decreased chest compliance. Some infants have respiratory distress from atelectasis and poor ventilation. This rachitic respiratory distress usually develops more than five weeks after birth. This distinguishes it from the early onset respiratory disease of premature infants. These infants have poor linear growth with negative effects on growth persisting beyond one year of age. An additional long-term effect is enamel hypoplasia and also poor bone mineralization can contribute to delicocephaly. There might be classic rachitic findings such as frontal bossing, rachitic rosary, cranial tapes, and widened wrists and ankles. Most infants with rickets of prematurity have no clinical manifestation and the diagnosis is based on radiographic and the laboratory findings. Uh, when we see the laboratory findings in rickets of prematurity, because of inadequate intake, the serum phosphorus level is low or low normal in patients with rickets of prematurity. The renal response is appropriate with conservation of phosphate leading to a low urine phosphate level since tubular reabsorption of phosphate is more than 95%. And most patients with rickets of prematurity have normal levels of vitamin D unless there has been adequate intake or poor absorption. The hypophosphatemia stimulates renal 1-alpha hydroxylase, so levels of 125 d hydroxy vitamin D are high or high normal. These high levels can contribute to demineralization because 125 d hydroxy vitamin D stimulates bone resorption. Serum levels of calcium are low, normal or high and the patient is often have hypercalciuria. These elevated serum calcium levels and hypercalciuria are secondary to increased intestinal absorption and bone dissolution caused by active vitamin D and the inability to deposit calcium in bone because of inadequate phosphorus supply. The hypercalciuria indicates that phosphorus is the limiting nutrient for bone mineralization. Also, increased the provision of phosphorus alone often co uh, cannot correct the mineralization defect. Increased calcium is also necessary. Thus, there is an inadequate supply of calcium and the phosphorus, but the deficiency in phosphorus is greater in the case of prematurity. Alkaline phosphate levels are often elevated, but some affected infants have normal levels. In some cases, normal alkaline phosphate levels might be secondary to resolution of the bone demineralization because of an adequate mineral supply despite the continued presence of radiologic changes, which take longer to resolve. However, alkaline phosphate levels might be normal despite active disease. No single blood test is 100% sensitive for the diagnosis of rickets of prematurity. The diagnosis should be suspected in infants with alkaline phosphate greater than 5 to 6 times the upper limit of normal for adults, or phosphorus less than 5.6 mg per dl. The diagnosis is confirmed by radiologic evidence of rickets, which is best seen on X-ray of films of wrist and ankles. 
Films of the arms and the legs might reveal fractures, and the rectic rosary might be visible on chest radiograph. Unfortunately, X-ray films cannot show demineralization of bone because changes are not evident until there is more than 20 to 30 percent reduction in the bone mineral content. Regarding screening, because many premature infants have no overt clinical manifestation of vacatus, screening tests are recommended. The tests should include weekly measurement of calcium, phosphorus, and alkaline phosphate, and periodic measurement of the serum bicarbonate concentration is also important because metabolic acidosis causes dissolution of bone. And at least one screening radiograph for rickettes at 6 to 8 weeks of age is appropriate in infants who are at high risk for rickettes, and additional films might be indicated in high risk infants. Regarding prevention, provision of adequate amount of calcium and phosphorus and also vitamin D significantly decreases the rickettes of prematurity. Parenteral nutrition is often necessary initially in very premature infants. These infants should receive either human milk fortified with calcium and phosphorus or preterm infant formula, which has higher concentration of calcium and phosphorus than standard formula. Soy formulas should be avoided because there is decreased bioavailability of calcium and phosphorus. Increased mineral feeding should continue until the infant weighs 3 to 3.5 kg. These infants or premature infants should also receive appropriate vitamin D level around 400 international units per day of vitamin D through formula and vitamin supplements. Regarding the treatment of rickets of prematurity, therapy for rickets of prematurity focuses on ensuring adequate delivery of calcium, phosphorus, and vitamin D. If mineral delivery has been good and there is no evidence of healing, it is important to screen for vitamin D deficiency by measuring uh, serum 25-hydroxy vitamin D, PTH, 1 to 5 hydroxy vitamin D and also sometimes determining urinary calcium and the phosphorus excretion might be needed. So this is all about the case of prematurity. Thank you for listening.